Okay, hello everyone. Um, should probably frame you up before I start recording, but where's the fun in that? Okay, if you're new here, um, I'm Kim. This is my channel, The Eco Tree, and I rock up every week and I chat all things about Etsy and running a business on there. This coffee and craft chat is something I do every single month and it's my chance to just sort of have a bit of a roundup. So um, it's basically broken down into three different segments. The first part, I always talk about my my whips and makes for the pre for the month just gone. Then we move on to news so that if there's anything that I can tell you about my own business or more often than not, if Etsy has been Etsying hard, we can discuss that if there's anything interesting there. And then at the end, we move on to sort of like a, a meat and potatoes kind of topic, which I usually put to people in um, the community tab of this channel. I did something a bit different this month. Usually instead of asking for topics, I basically came up with a few things that have been rattling around my brain and I said which one of these would you like me to talk about and the overwhelming uh, percentage of you chose to talk about self-sabotage at least I think you did the last time I checked you had it might have evened up a little bit since then but self-sabotage it is going to be I realised that uh, sharing makes and stuff might not be everyone's cup of tea, so I'll add chapters so that you can skip to the parts of the video that you want to see. But it'd be nice to have you on board, so you know. Let me show you my things! <laughs> we'll start with uh, shoppy things and then we'll move on to the what I consider to be the interesting things. But last month I was working on this hoop, which is um, nothing but positive vibes. Positive vibes are crossed out rather aggressively um, and then it's replaced with real human emotions because ironically I think this actually works really well with this video. Positive emotions are lovely, we like them a lot um, but they're not, you can't have light without dark, happy without sad etc etc, you need it. There are two sides of the same coin and um, I, I, I have been feeling all of the real human emotions over the last few weeks but I digress. Next make, and I am very happy with this one. If you watched my last video, which was the, the stitch along, you'll have seen this before. And also if you're a Stranger fans, you will recognise who this is. Um, this is Eddie, and he's a character from Stranger Things, and he is chaos personified, and I love that. Um, for someone who doesn't actually like chaos in real life, I am really, really drawn to chaotic characters and stuff. I don't know why, it must fill a need within me. Or maybe I just relate to it a little bit. Anywho, that's a conversation for a therapist, not for YouTube. So let's get back to this. I'm, I'm not over keen on the filling there. I think it sort of throws off the illustration a little bit. But there was something about this quote. The, you know, the Shire is burning so Mordor it is. And I just thought, hmm, that seems to fit nicely in with life in general at the moment, doesn't it? Or is that just me? Anyway, that's one of my makes and I'm very, very happy. That will not be going up in the shop. I um, don't know if I mentioned it before I'm throwing them around. This one will be going up in the shop. This one is mine. <laughs> it's all mine. What's next? I'm trying to rattle through them. Oh yeah, remember my, um, my granny square? I'm, I'm making a granny square cardigan for those who are new here. And last month I showed you um, well, let me just show you. I showed you this bright monstrosity and the pink, as you can see, was so bright that my camera had a fit and refused to even register it. And I must admit, as time went on, I looked at the colours and I thought, too bright even for me. So I have changed them. I basically, um, I don't know, frogged is the right word when you frog something. Is that a knitting term? I don't know. I unstitched the outer um, row and just replaced it with um, black instead because I like I like black edging on granny squares. I think it gives it a nice look. It makes the colours pop and it's just... I like it. It's a good look. So I have all of these granny squares ready to add to this. This is me starting a line and eventually I'll be able to see just how just how long I need to make this thing. Um, but that's my progress with the cardigan. And my my last um, 
make or makes. This is actually shop related. Um, look, I've four of them. Oops. Now I don't know if I'm going to sell them in the shop as these finished hoops. Probably not. These are the finished stitched up hoops that I've been making and I'm dropping them um, for the downloadable patterns that I'm hoping to release shortly. And if they look basic, it's because they're supposed to be. These are, have I just said, beginner? Beginner. They're beginner patterns. And they've, they're um, just some of my favourite motivational quotes. What you choose to focus on will grow. One day at a time. Constantly have to remind myself of that. If you follow me anyway, you will know that this is one of my personal favourites ever. A year from now, you'll be glad you started. That's probably, and this is just relevant to life, it's okay to rest. Because sometimes, no matter how well you plan things, and no matter how good your intentions, life gets in the way. So basically I stitched these up because I'm going to be um, adding a small tutorial video with the downloadable patterns. Making how-to videos is not my forte, it's brand new. It's a whole different skill set to this chatty type of video. Um, and I'm kind of making it up as I go along. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. So what I'm doing is a very basic rough and dirty type how-to. Um, it will do the job and then later on I will refilm them. Right, um, what else was I going to show you? Was there anything else? Oh yes! This arrived just before I sat down to record. Now I have already unpacked it because I have already filmed this. Um, but so, seeing as we're doing it a second time, we'll just pretend that I've just got this and I'm unpacking it. If I can get it out of the tube. There we go. Right, if you are familiar with my shop, you will have seen these. So basically my quarterly planners and as th at the time of filming we are right at the end of June so we're coming out of quarter two and we're about to go into quarter three and that's how I like to plan my year. I find if I try and make these grand plans at the beginning of the year for the entire year th they just go to pot. Life happens and you have to adjust the sales constantly so I try to plan my business in three months chunks it just works a lot better and fun fact these were never supposed to go up in the shop these I made for me it's why they've got my um my little beech tree logo thing on there and um but when I first reopened my shop after the whole Rona pandemic stuff last year um I struggled to keep items stocked in the shop so I, I stuck in some digital downloads um just to make sure I had products in all the time and the only ones that I could think of were these quarterly planners. So yes, they will be actually taken out of the shop at some point. Not yet. I'm not, you know, you, you, this isn't me going, you must get them now if you want them. Um, they're not um, coming out imminently, but that is the plan eventually to take them out because as I say, this was meant to be for me. Um, this one, I've only got two goals on there, um, but the ones in the shop have three. There's different colour combinations. I've got one spring version. I've got a, an autumn colour themed one and I've got a winter one. So yes, it's nice and clean and pretty and I'm looking forward to scribbling all over it again. Okay, on to news. Right, so um, if you are a regular here, you will know that I have been pivoting really, really hard in my shop since everything kicked off and by everything I mean the cost of living crisis here in the UK and <sighs> everything. So I've just been pivoting the shop to try and um, make some of my items more evergreen which was my plan from the beginning of the year anyway but also to pivot them towards more need, I, I call them need-esque items. When I say need-esque I guess I'm just talking about the justified wants really. I'm nearly there. I'm nearly there. I have listed the stick and stitch patches. I am so relieved. But yes, the stick and stitch patches are up. Thank you to those of you that have made um, sales. I It's good to know that in next week's stats video, I'm going to have something to report on. <laughs> 
Oh, but and again, if you're new here, every month I go into my stats and I share my revenue, um, my visits, and I forgot to do it last month because I was so nervous about making that first video. But the idea is I'm going to also break down where my visits come from, like where my traffic comes from and stuff. And um, hopefully there'll be something uh, beneficial and useful for you in there. And if not, I hope it will just kill 10 to 15 minutes or so and maybe make you feel a bit better. Right, what next? Oh yes, introduce embroidery storage idea. Well, I'll just bring you up. That is what I use to store my embroidery thread. And I think it looks very, very pretty and it just keeps me, keeps me motivated. I like to see things because if I can't see things, I tend to kind of forget they exist and therefore I just don't do the work. But that is too small. And I've been asking my husband to make me a bigger one <laughs> oh my god! And he did! <laughs> it's basically two of those. And it's... it's a beast! And I nearly dropped it on my head. Whew! It's... it's heavy! But I was wondering if other people would be interested in these. But that size, so... Ooh, didn't mean to do that. Big old hand coming at your face. That size! Um, and if so, I'm going to drop this on me. It's too heavy to hold with one hand. Those ones behind me are lighter, by the way. Um, I was thinking about doing like a bit of a collab with my uh, with my husband. So if you are into embroidery and um, you think something like this would be cool, let me know. Unfortunately, if we were to release these in the shop, it would have to be just open to UK people, at least for the start, because they are just for packaging and postage reasons. Basically, they're um, you can't just shove them through a letterbox. So you'd have we'd have to make sure that they were nice and protected. And obviously, the further they go, uh, the more nervous I would get. So at least to begin with, they would be launched to uh, UK folks. What do you reckon? Yay, now for the stitches among you, would, would you? Would you not? I'd love to know. If you have any um, feedback or ideas for my husband, um, let him know in the comments. Obviously be respectful or I will come after you. I won't, I'll just eat you off my um, channel because I've said it before, it's my channel and I do what I want. <laughs> okay, next we've got some um, Etsy stuff, Etsy news. What have, what have they done? Yes, they've announced their purchase protection program. I've done a video on that. Apparently Etsy are running a test where they are playing with an add to cart button on the thumbnail. I'm not a part of this test. I'm quite relieved, I'm going to be honest. Don't think this is a good idea. I know that Etsy want to drum up business as much as possible. I have real issues about trying to get sales at all costs because I think the I think clever marketing is when uh, somebody who has got something to sell aligns that with someone who is looking to buy something. So both people in that equation want the same thing. I just think it, it could attract more, um, it increases the likelihood of buyer's regret it, and having to deal with things like cancelled orders and um, refunds. And not that I'm against cancelling orders or refunds, but I'm against anything that takes that cooling off period for the buyer. I think they need time to work out if they really want your thing or not, because if they don't do it before they get to the cart, they will do it afterwards. And then what you've got is more work and that's what it boils down to. So again, I'm talking a lot about something that is just in test mode at the moment. I'm not sure about that one. I'll leave it at that. Let's move on. Oh, and last one is another test. They are playing around with um, allowing buyers to leave video uh, reviews. So you know how they can add a photograph to their review? Well, now they can add a video. And um, I, I think this could be quite useful. I have seen people go the other way and they're not over keen on the possibility of their products being shown in a poor light. And they mean that figuratively and literally. Using my buyer behavior as an example, and I realize that I don't talk for everyone, but um, I know that when I see something that has photographs 
attached to the review. I will look at the photographs before I read the review and often it's the photographs that will make me decide whether or not that thing is something I genuinely want to buy because in my mind as a buyer those photographs are almost more truthful than the seller's photographs because the seller wants you to buy the thing so obviously they're going to show it to you in its best light um, again figuratively and literally whereas a buyer a buyer is more honest I guess I guess their lens is more honest so therefore these these photographs act as really really strong social proof and videos will just be an extension of that in my mind the one question I did have was whether or not these videos would have sound in or not because the ones that we can list in our listings um, they don't have sound but um, an Instagram friend of mine, hi Chelsea, um, she actually contacted me and showed me one that she'd received on her shop and that one did have sound. So, huh, okay, I'm personally keeping an open mind about this one. I'm not scared by it. I don't think it's a bad thing. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not stressed about that one, but again, we're talking about another test. We shall see. And there endeth the news. Ugh. Moving on, self-sabotage. I have so much to say about this. Way back in the day, I studied psychology. <laughs> Mere weeks before my final exams, I dropped out. And it was all due, ironically, to self-sabotage. <laughs> And it's ironic because as a part of the studies, I was studying things like self-sabotage and, um, so, you know, psychologists such as Carl Jung and his concept of um, the shadow. Yeah, not, not the best decision I've ever made in my life. But anyway, fast forward years later, um, I decide that I want to try out this thing called YouTube and I wanted to create myself, excuse me, a little channel. Did I do it? Mm -mm not for three years, because I, I had all of these excuses. I was afraid of negative comments. I wasn't. I didn't think I had anything to say. <laughs> Anybody who follows me here knows that I'm hard to shut up. I was afraid what people would think of me. I mean, I was afraid of what people thought of me even without the YouTube channel. So <clears throat> I had this feeling right back then. This is when my daughter was very little. I just had this feeling that YouTube was a key for me to build the business and I just felt that deep in my core and yet I stopped myself from doing it every single time with stupid little excuses that deep down I knew were just that and it wasn't until years later when we had just moved into this house actually and I think it was it was something to do with the move that kind of triggered something about new fresh new beginnings and stuff and I just thought you know what enough I'm gonna try it I was still getting in my way a little bit, but at least I was making the first, I was taking the first step. And I could, I recognised very familiar feelings cropping up as I was doing this. It was, it was almost as if stepping out of my comfort zone, I had all of these voices and they were my own voices, but I was applying them to certain people within my life. These people had not said these things, but I, in my head, I was, I was applying words to them. And a lot of old feelings started coming back. And it felt like the more I pushed myself out of my comfort zone, the louder these, these, these voices got. So I knew I had some work to do. Um, now, I should say, I didn't get professional help. However, if you believe that you are self-sabotaging your own progress, your own business, your own life in any way, shape or form, if you can, if you have the means to, I strongly recommend speaking to a... A qualified professional you will get so much more from it than any youtube video that i or anybody else can make i promise you i do appreciate that for a lot of people that's not possible especially with everything going on just remember that we are dealing with with deep stuff here and you cannot get a nice quick fix from a youtube video this one included that being said I will share with you what I do when I start feeling these feelings creeping back, and they do, regularly. <laughs> now, before actually, before I do that, I should say that self-sabotage, it, it's all based on our core beliefs about ourselves, and these core beliefs are things that we 
we develop through childhood. So this is, you can see already why it's getting very, very deep, very quick. And we end up having, in order to fix this or to work with it, we have to go into some pretty murky stuff. Some of the stuff that we have worked really, really hard to hide from ourselves. I mean, it seems obvious that if we have these happy, shiny, amazing goals for ourselves that we would want to hit them and we will do everything within our power to work towards them. But where self-sabotage comes in, sometimes the things that we need to do and the beliefs that we need to have about ourselves in order to um, achieve these goals, they feel unfamiliar to us. We might come from a background where we believe that we are not worthy of certain things or that certain things aren't for us. And that's, although that can feel horrible, it's also, it also feels familiar and home is in the familiar. So we don't want to move out of the familiar. And the moment that we do, we bring ourselves back in. It's a comfort zone in a weird way. And self-sabotage allows us to feel like we have some form of control, whereas stepping out of our comfort zone and away from the familiar, it feels like we have no control. And that's scary. Okay, this is where I'm drawing from my very sketchy memory of my studies now. Um, there was a Swiss psychologist called Carl Jung. Jung came up with the concept of the shadow. And in I'm trying to think of it in a, a nice neat little nutshell. Essentially the shadow is like the unconscious dark attic or um, basement of our minds where we stick things in about ourselves that we we don't like or we don't want to believe about ourselves or we just we, we repress them so to the point that even we aren't necessarily aware that they're there or that they exist or that they are a part of us. And the reason why this is relevant it's is that the key to um, hitting our goals is very, very often linked to digging deep into our boxes that we have hidden way back in our attic. And rather than repressing it, trying to accept these parts of ourselves, make peace with them and even integrate them into our conscious thinking and our lives rather than pushing them back into our unconscious. That is a very oversimplified nutshell explanation and I do recommend that if anybody has any um, interest in this that you you look up the shadow and Carl Jung's work on it and shadow work and you are essentially trying to make the unconscious conscious which sounds so bloody easy <laughs> doesn't it? Truth be told though it's work and it takes a lot of time. I've been working on this personally for four, three, four years now. And I've noticed it's very much like a muscle. The more you work on it, the easier and the better it becomes. But it's also true that um, the moment you stop working on it, if you don't pick it up again, old habits creep back. You can hear the the, the voices and, and feel the emotions coming back. Um, and this is usually why, who was it who said, was it Brené Brown or Liz Gilbert? who said something, and I'm paraphrasing here, said something along the lines of um, the mind is, is a place that you don't want to delve in by yourself or something of that ilk, which is why I recommend speaking to a qualified professional. That being said, and like I said, we can't all afford help, but there are things that you can do yourself. Um, if we're talking about self-sabotage in terms of your business, um, I would start by making a list of what you would love to achieve. No judgment, no concern about having to go for these goals if that's too scary, but just without feeling too attached to it, just write down like if you wanted your business to look and feel a certain way, what would that look like? This is what I did because I wanted to know what my big goals were. The if anything could happen, you know, that though that kind of level of goal. That was what I wanted to identify in my head. And I finished my list and I was like, never going to happen. So you first make a list of all of your negative beliefs about yourself. Um, obviously, I'm not going to tell you all of mine because that's very personal and very private. But there is one that I'm happy to um, share with you because it relates to this channel. 
And that was a core belief that nobody wanted to hear what I had to say. And I know exactly where that came from. And it was a childhood thing. And there's a whole lot of weight in there. But it influenced everything. It influenced every decision I made as an adult in ways that I hadn't even realised. People didn't want to hear what I had to say. So what was the point of starting a YouTube channel? Nobody cared. Nobody wanted to hear what I had to say. That was a belief. But instead of saying, I am afraid of this, I told myself, I might get some bad comments. I don't have the right equipment. It's not a good time. I don't have editing software, etc, etc. Those were just excuses. The core feeling was rejection. Nobody wants to hear what I have to say. You wouldn't say this to someone that you loved. You wouldn't say, I wouldn't say this to a complete stranger in the street, let alone someone I loved, but I, I was happy to say it to myself um, unconsciously and consciously a lot of the time. Okay, so the next thing that I do is to write down the complete opposite. The complete opposite. And so the complete opposite of that was people want to hear what I have to say, because that's the truth. That's the reality. Of course, I could say, well, not everybody wants to hear what I have to say. So not everybody wanted to hear what Gandhi said. Not that I am comparing myself to Gandhi. <laughs> My point is people do want to hear what I have to say. And now that I've set up this channel and I am years in and you're watching this video and you're still watching this video to this point. And then the next thing that I did was... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite write all of these things down and then put them on post-its around my house. You know, like some people do with, um, what do they call them? Affirmations and stuff. You are worthy. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You are worthy. But that just doesn't really work for me. Um, I would end up seeing one of these post-it notes and I just feel corny as heck. So what I just did was that I put it on um, a piece of paper in my work area or in my journal, somewhere where I would see it, but not necessarily other people. And I would just constantly read it and try and remind myself about this. Essentially, the trick is you want to, this is where the muscle comes in. You want to try and start identifying when you are telling yourself these things. And if you can just catch yourself in the moment and then tell yourself the opposite, you won't believe it it will just feel like robotic, like, no, 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 people do want to hear what I have to say. But this is where the muscle thing comes in. Um, at the start, it's more about catching yourself when you're having these these thoughts. And a lot of the time, you won't be able to catch it. it would, they're, they're just so, like, sneaky, and they just, they go in, and you you, th you won't catch it until much later, and you'll think, oh, I, I was doing it back then. That counts. That counts. Just keep on until it's done. And you'll notice that you catch yourself doing it more and more and more often. Brilliant. You're building that muscle. And the next thing is that you have to um, not just interrupt that thought if you can, but tell yourself the opposite. Because every single time you tell yourself a negative thought, it gets stronger. That muscle gets stronger and that's what you believe. So you have to keep on telling yourself the opposite and that's going to take time. And it's hard assed work. <laughs> And it can feel in the early days like it's not even working. Why are you even bothering? Um, but this is why it's work. And it does get better. I started this just before I started my YouTube channel. I'm using my YouTube channel as an example. And it felt bad. And I was, I still had all of these thoughts coming up into my head. I wasn't catching them all of the time. I, in fact, if anything, they got worse, they got louder, and it was a bit of a struggle to keep going. And then the last thing that I do is that I try to parent myself. If you think of someone that you love dearly, and then you take one of the thoughts that you think about yourself, one of the negative thoughts that you think about yourself, and you imagine yourself saying it to them, it's heartbreaking. And that will focus your mind so fast. If you wouldn't say it, to someone that you loved. If you wouldn't go back in time to little you and say it to little you, don't say it to big you. <laughs> okay, this is one of the reasons why I've, I avoid these kind of meaty topics because none of what I have said has done it justice. This is a massive, massive 
huge thing and the work involved is insane which is why if you can I do recommend getting help if you feel like you're struggling. That being said if you want a small tip that can help you journaling is a massively helpful one. I'm not a journaler by any stretch of the imagination but when I am feeling the noise in my head and I'm feeling those old feelings creep back sometimes just half an hour and a bit of paper it just helps. It, it helps just quieten the noise and it helps remind me just that little bit to, to give myself the balance, the other side of that argument. If I'm telling myself in one ear that nobody wants to hear what I have to say, I just say to myself in the other ear, yes they do. People do want to hear what you have to say. Even if I don't believe it and then eventually it gets a bit better. It's a muscle, it's work, and if you are going through it, then, oh, I, I would love to say, I'm out of it. This is how I did it. I'm not out of it. I never will be because at the end of the day, we're human and it, it's messy in there. <laughs> be kind to yourself or as I like to tell myself, parent yourself. Whew, that was heavier than my usual. <laughs> I hope this has been helpful. Hopefully I will see you next week. Bye-bye.